Hey everybody, it's John from Nara Games, and this week's devlog we're going to cover a new system that we started up on. Um, it's something I'm calling the uh, Combat Character Controller. Um, as you can see, it's got you know directional attacks, which is something a little bit different for the kit. Um, you know, really the inspiration for this was a number of games that I like and games that I don't like. Um, you know. This is a very popular game you're seeing on the screen, and it's really my idea of you know the third circle of hell with all the different uh, hotkey buttons to try to control your attacks. So you know I, I prefer something a little bit more organic. Um, so let's take a look at what it might look like in game. Um, I'm going to fire up a second client here and um, show it to you with kind of stock kit, um, so to speak. And you know of course if it, we can't show it uh, with both uh, clients running, then it didn't actually happen because we obviously need this for an MMO. So there we see all the directional attacks working um, just kind of with the stock kit. And uh, let's log in the other client and position her so we can see both at the same time. And she should also see the um, the exact same uh, attacks being carried out. Um, you know, uh, so there you go. You can see, you know, there's a swing uh, right and swing left. And all right, so it's the same. The animations are matching up for uh, for both uh, both clients because we're syncing all those across, of course. Let's go ahead and um, take on some of these monsters. Um, you know, one of the things we added um, with the directional attacks is, of course, um, directional damage, and really that's you know out of the box. Um, it's something I hadn't played with before, uh, but there are hit boxes that come with the kit, and we just configured those for these particular monster entities. So you have things like headshots, which um, you know do more damage. Uh, this particular session for the devlog, I'm actually going to dive pretty deep into code. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. So it all kind of revolves around um, this player character controller, um, which you know you can see implemented here. Um, you know, in this particular prefab. Let's open up the code. Um, really, what you know, the philosophy we try to do here was that the existing um, kit has the ability to show random animations for any given attack or weapon attack. And we're gonna to try to hijack that. So working backwards from that, the first thing I did was of course built the UI. So um, you know we've got this thing called a combat anim um, or animation. And um, we're gonna save that, you know, whatever the player ends up choosing, um, to the uh, to the entity. So we'll open up the base character entity, and there you see the mechanism for storing that combat anim that was chosen through the UI. Um, the rest of this is, you know, we're taking something called, you know, the update target battle mode, and um, this is where we're looking for all those update actions related to um, mouse up, mouse down, um, and, you know, updating the UI accordingly. Um, it's only on the mouse up that we actually fire off the attack, um, and we have to configure the weapon to do that. But here you can kind of see the code, um, you know, we're changing the direction of the um, the indicator um, based on the axis um, for uh, you know from the input manager. So um, you know all of that uh, is going to correspond with you know these enums um, for a common anim. So up, down, left, right, right. So pretty simple stuff. Um, and from that, um, you know, all we're doing is basically again setting the uh, setting the uh, you know the uh, UI. So um, here you can see in the controller itself, we added a new component, you know, along with the shooter crosshair, um, which is that uh, directional rectangle. Um, and that's the, the subcomponents up, down, left, right, are what are getting enabled or disabled depending on the mouse movement once you put the uh, mouse uh, fire one down. So um, along with the controller, um, I had to kind of dig kind of deep into um, this thing called the attack component. So there's something called the default character attack component. And um, that's where most of the logic happens for managing the attack. And, um, you know, there was really no, no, I couldn't just really do a partial on it. So I really kind of had to override the whole thing. So here we can see we've got a brand new one. Um, it's, it's more or less copy and paste um, from the existing one, and I'll highlight where it's different. So we've added in rigid body um, entity movement um, as an option. Um, to this controller, you know, all the attacks I do are going to have rigid body in them, and I want them enabled um, on those attack animations. And then every function, um, you know, from the original one, we've added in the comet anim as an argument um, for pretty much every single one of those functions. So what is that, and where does that get set? So 
that's the random animation that you see there. And it's calling a function. You know, I dug into it. It's really hard to kind of um, disambiguate or, you know, override it. So we're just letting it run as is. And that spits out something called the animation index. Basically, we have an array. We pick a random one in the array, and that's what we're going to play. But in this case, we're saying whatever you ended up doing in that random um, random picking part, um, we're going to override it with the um, combat anim that you chose, you know, through the UI. And then we set the rigid body uh, on right before all of this, turn it back off right at the end. Um, but everything else is more or less the same in um, in this function. Let me turn it off. If we scroll down some more, um, we'll see the attack function. Again, none of this really changed. Um, so there we see in the attack function, um, you know, where we're uh, Again, passing in that entity combat anim. And remember, that's the thing that we set in that base character entity, which again is based on the controller. So the controller sets the base character entity, the base character entity passes that on and makes it available to, um, to this uh, combat uh, character component. So that's you know, essentially the logic, right? That's essentially the logic that we had to do to, to pull this off. Um, I think it's pretty clean and straightforward. Um, next thing I'll show here is um, if we go into the, uh, I think the animations is probably what we want to show next. So, um, you know, in the player model, if we go into the um, where the animations are set, you're in playable character model. This also works for the animation character model too, which is what I'm actually using for Uma at the moment. Um, I'll probably try to uh, reverse that out. But you know, we've got your default attack animations, both right and left hand. This really has nothing to do with that. Um, combat doesn't, uh, per se. It's really tied to the weapon. Um, you do want to probably turn off the charge um, animations, that is, get rid of them, because those would potentially play with combat, because um, that's the mouse down. And then here are those four animations that, um, instead of being random, they, again, carefully correspond to um, the directions in that enome. So they need to be in this order. They need to be up, down, left, right. Now, could I have extended, um, you know, extended this weapon uh, uh, property to have my own custom slots for these? Yeah, absolutely, I could have. But the idea here is to make it minimally invasive um, and, uh, you know, as, as compatible as possible with you know anything that exists before or after. So, you know, the random stuff is out of the box. I'm just going to hijack again what the meaning of the order is. Um, so nothing else changes there. So that's pretty much it for the uh, player character changes. Um, if I go into now, um, let's see here, I probably want to go into, yeah, it's the same one. Let's go into, uh, ooh, the scene. Yeah. So a couple things change in, um, the game instance, um, which you'll want to set if you're, um, adapting this to your own build. So there's that combat text, um, a UI string. That's just a utility thing. I'll explain that in a second. There you want to probably set your default uh, player controller. Um, and that's basically it for your game instance settings or game instance changes. Um, the part I wanted to talk about, you know, the game database is just stuff for uh, those changes are just for the demo, right? Um, this is important. So on the weapon itself, um, and you're going to unfortunately need to do this for all the weapons um, because I wanted to, again, to be pretty minimally invasive, but in this case, you do need to make some changes. Um, whether you turn off or turn on the crosshairs up to you, I like it off because you, otherwise you'd have two indicators there. But this fire type fire on release is kind of key. Um, that's what allows you to do the mouse down, allow you to pick the direction, mouse up is where you actually perform the attack. So every weapon is going to end up being that fire on release. Um, and um, if we look at the directional damage, um, again, that's mostly out of the box. There's no changes here, um, you know, in terms of components or anything like that. It's all done with um, setting up the uh, Unity out of the box um, ragdoll. So you set that up and you drag over the bones that you need to drag over like this, right? And that's going to add in colliders and, and joints and a bunch of other stuff. And then on each of the um, bones that end up having a collider, you can optionally put in a damageable hitbox. And that's just kind of normal out of the box stuff. Um, we ended up um, creating a, a override class for it called Combat Damageable Hitbox, which allows you to put in um, some text. 
um, in this text. You can see that combat text is what gets displayed um, optionally depending on if you hit certain things. So if I go find the head here, that's where you saw in that video it said headshot. That's where that's coming from, right? So you hit the head collider, um, it's going to tell you headshot, and then again the damage rate is out of the box. So in this case, you get you know 50% increase when you hit the head. So now you've combined you know directional attacks with directional damage, um, and it all starts to kind of make sense as a cohesive system, right? So why would you have directional attacks if you can't you know if they're all the same? Um, you definitely want to have directional damage. And here I'm showing you kind of like a backstab area. Um, so the back would have, you know, bonus damage and then even the shield um, that makes things like blocking with the shield, you know, much more interesting. So I've added to that, um, to that uh, item, uh, its own box collider, and we're going to reduce the damage all the way down to, you know, almost zero um, and then say block. And in this case, I haven't yet um, finalized it, but we'll probably not do the uh, normal blocking uh, with the shield if we're going to do this directional stuff. So I've released all of this um, to, uh, to the community. Um, you can find it uh, on the Denari Games GitHub. And um, I've you know, taken the time to write out some of the instructions on setting this all up. So that's about it. Have a good night. Bye.